So Sports Card Radio had a poll I was looking at and he was commenting on Jeff Wilson, which is Sports Card Investors recent video, uh, whether or not it was a good time to buy cards. And obviously he's always promoting buying cards. Now, one thing that we have to absolutely take account of is that his market mover app and his investments in slab protectors and stands and whatever else in his own collection does benefit from him telling you to buy cards. If the market increases because more people want to buy cards, it's just simple economics, right? Then the card prices will increase. More people will use pay and pay for the app. Um, and you know, more people will buy the slab protectors and all these other accessories that cost a lot of money compared to Alibaba, where you can buy the same quality, the same exact thing for one one hundredth of the cost, to be honest with you, right? So when we talk about the, you know, incentives and what people, why people are telling you something, I do agree that there is benefit for Jeff Wilson to tell you to buy more sports cards because he owns a sports card company. So if people lose interest, if people no longer want to pay as much money, hey, his company loses a little bit of value, right? Or a lot of value depending on how you see it. Now, in terms of where I, my, uh, I guess, I don't know if you can even hear that, but it's the uh, washer. So it's Sunday, I, like 2 a.m. I'm doing the washing and the drying and the folding of my clothing probably tonight. So where do I stand on this? I We are in a Joe Biden recession. If you wanna go see full length videos about what I think about the recession, you can go on my other channel, Godless, to go check it out. But this is gonna be a long and very difficult recession for a lot of people. And if you can't stomach, so this is the problem. The problem is when things are very low, people have don't have money, right? So the whole idea of DCA and crypto dollar cost um, averaging is that, hey, if something go, if a stock goes down, a crypto goes down, you just continue to buy it. But my question is, where are you getting this money from? Right? By definition, it's in a recession, depression, because nobody's got money. So it's fantastic if you still have money left and you can still buy these sports cards at, as Jeff said, you know, 50% off, 60, 80% off. Yeah, I mean, it's great, you know, but like, do you really have that much? So the way the economic, the economy works is when times are really good, that's when people have money and they're spending. And that's why the cards are so valuable. But when times are really bad, like today, like tomorrow, like a, a year from now, I'm predicting, uh, I predict that it's going to get much worse before it gets any better because, you know, interest is accumulation. Um, there, you know, every fifth grader learns that, you know, if you put a dollar in a bank in 1920, that dollar becomes some insane amount because of accum uh, cumulative interest. Inflation is also cumulative. So if Joe Biden is a president for four years and every year we have 8% plus inflation. That's not 8%, guys, that's 8% every year that stacks, right? So at the end, it's probably like 45%. It's like 1.08 to the power of four, whatever that is equivalent to. I don't know, I can't do the math right now, but I think it's some insane amount number because it's not even adding the 0.8 together, it's compounding interest, which is one of the most devastating things anyone I mean, if you want to talk about student loans and why student loans are so ridiculous and why the interest, because it's compounding interest. That's what inflation is. Inflation is student loans for everybody, for every American now gets the uh, ability to experience student loans across whatever they buy. So we are in a society where our economy, our GDP is down, everyone's feeling bad, the jobs suck. I know Joe Biden says, oh, there's two jobs for every one person. The two jobs suck, man. They're at McDonald's and Walmart. Man, nobody wanna work at a restaurant, McDonald's or Walmart, man. That's not a career. So I can go on and on and on and maybe we'll do a live stream where I just talk it about Joe Biden the whole time because I have a lot of really, you know, it's not about, if, 
I think the economy will get a lot better as soon as Joe Biden leaves, whether or not it's a Democrat or Republican. So a lot of people don't, they, they think I'm some Republican clown or something, but like, I don't care who it is. It could be a Democrat. Um, there's a guy called Mayor Pete, and he's very interesting. I haven't studied up on him. I used to do a lot of videos about Andrew Yang. Uh, he's very interesting, but I don't think, you know, I, I think the trigger point won't be, oh, a Democrat won again. The trigger point would be, oh, some uh, somebody beat Joe Biden, and it could be someone within his own party, as long as it's not Kamala Harris. You know, that would be, you know, an equally devastating you know, thing to the economy, in my opinion. But anyway, let's, let's go back to um, the Jeff Wilson argument I'm going to make. Does he benefit from you know, telling you to buy cards? Absolutely. All his companies are predicated, at least in the sports card investor grants, on you buying cards for as much money as he can sell them for. Does he believe that they can go up? Yes, I do believe that he is... So I used to think that he just made these stuff up and that he was doing fake trades all the time because that's what happens in magic where we do a fake trade. Now I realize that he's actually made some of the most, some of the worst trades I've ever seen. I, I mean, I'm never gonna forget the, the one-on-one Michael Jordan auto for a James Harden. James Harden's a bum. That was Michael Jordan, a goat. You traded a bum, you traded a goat, you traded a goat away for a bum. <laughs> it's a one of one Michael Jordan. I mean, come on, come on, dude. Oh man. And then he goes and he's buying stadium tickets. He's overpaying for everything. Like he doesn't even understand like a stadium chick, like stuff and stuff. That has no market appeal until you made a video about it, telling people to go out and buy it and suddenly it has market appeal. So anyway, I think it's a terrible time to buy cards. And you know, if you wanna wait a year or two, I think that would be interesting, that will be the bottom. I don't think we're at bottom yet. My philosophy in buying is very simple. If you can afford to buy it and you can afford it to go to zero, it brings you some amount of joy, go ahead and buy it. Okay, it's, it's, it's that simple in my mind, but you have to be okay if it goes to zero. If you're trying to buy it because you want to flip it, because you want to make money from it, you think it's like a 401k, now is not the time because there are other opportunities in stocks and bonds and what a mortgage is, you know, assuming the housing crisis hits us pretty hard, real estate, there's going to be other better, more logical opportunities and easier, more liquid opportunities like a stock or even crypto, right? to make money than cards. So even though I do think cards are at a relative low and you could, and in five years, these cards will be worth more money. So I don't disagree with that. You have to look at what else is there to buy. So they always use the analogy, oh, you can, if you went back in time, I would just buy a bunch of, you know, Michael Jordan cards. I am gonna effing buy Apple stock. I would buy Amazon stock. I would buy these stocks before I bought the, the cards. So anyway, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Um, it's it's interesting, and I do give him credit because he he does actually believe what he's saying. I just don't think it's correct. And yes, he pulls data together and he aggregates data, and he wants to make it seem very. I do analytics for a living. This is like elementary analytics what they're doing and when they mention oh i did a deep data dive what an effort like have you never seen google analytics before like holy blank me right blank me that was not a deep dive my friend that was you just pulling numbers on ebay and it's um again i think it's one of those systems so in, in marketing so um some somebody makes a cool app and it's supposed to do all these things for you, but in reality, it's just a human being. It's like kind of the wizard of odds. It's one of the uh, minimally viable products is you make an app everyone thinks is automated, but really it's just done the same way that all other analytics is done by hand. 
I think that's what's going on with market movers. Um, I don't think they have advanced knowledge. I don't think they have deep dives and data and things that like, you know, can tell you what, because at the end of the day, like if you really had that, let's imagine instead of cards, it's with stocks. If you really had a program that could predict in the next year, if you bought this stock, it will triple in price. Why would you ever share the program? Wouldn't you just invest in the stock? Wouldn't you use the program to make a fortune for yourself? Like I, I'm, I'm not understanding, like if this is a program that can tell you how to make money from cards, then why has none of the people using, none of the creators of the program, like why has Jeff not made any good business decisions on cards? It seems like he loses a lot of money on cards. Like, so anyway, that's my biggest criticism as to like, you know, the, mar the best marketing for this app would be very simple. It's not open to the public. You got to show some expertise. You need to be a high roller. You know, it's kind of a secret app that costs a lot of money. You get one on one time with Jeff and then we work on, you know, what cards to go buy together at a buyout. We manipulate the market. Yeah, that would make more sense to me as opposed to, oh, this is an app that everyone can pay a minimal amount. I mean, not minimal uh, amount of money to use. And then we're all going to use it on the each seller. Right. So like nobody has an advantage because like if I if this card was going to triple in price, I have the app. I'm trying to buy the card. Why would you sell me the card? The app tells you that this card is going to triple in price. So why would you sell it to me? Anyway, let me know, guys, in comments below. Hi, guys.